Today's topic is word walls. You may be familiar with the ones visible in early elementary classrooms to teach sight words, but past about second grade, they become a mostly forgotten tool. Maybe you'll see some version of them in upper level classrooms, but the older students get, the less likely we are to use them. Right when we expect students to be using complex vocabulary, those word walls drop out of sight. Word walls can help open the doors to deeper discussions in the content areas, one aspect of the Common Core that will be a challenge for us to meet with English language learners. Word walls can take so many forms. One is interactive. Here's an example in a math classroom. Cards have the concept or strategy on the front, and students can see the definition or an example on the back when they flip it up. A second is unit specific. In my own classroom, I have the writing process and parts of the leaf paragraph structure prominently featured on my wall. There are personal word walls like this one that can be used to help students correctly spell words during writing and others that the class contributes to as a particular unit progresses. Here's an example of a Narnia word wall. Reading researchers put vocabulary into three tiers. Tier one consists of everyday words. Tier two has tougher words but ones that are still frequently used. These include transition words and those words often used in directions that our students are expected to read and understand, such as describe, explain, contrast, and investigate. These words, because of their frequent use, we sometimes overlook as far as the need to teach them explicitly. Tier 3 words are content specific. These are the words that normally focus on vocabulary instruction. But without those Tier 2 words, students could become frustrated in trying to implement those Tier 3 words we spend so much time on. When considering what words you might use on a word wall, author Debbie Zakarian uses the acronym TWIPS to help teachers and students to consider vocabulary as key terms, words, idioms, and phrases. These are all areas in which English language learners can benefit from direct instruction. WIDA blogger Tammy King has a few tips for those of you considering introducing word walls into your classrooms. One, Include phrases and even symbols on your content area word walls. Two, illustrate them or ask students to come up with their own illustrations. Three, provide target vocabulary in your student's native language if possible. Four, decide how to organize your word wall for easiest access. Look for additional resources you might find useful in addressing vocabulary needs in your classroom on the ELL Teaching Tips site, ow.ly slash ge capital F lowercase a y. See you next time. Thanks so much for taking time out today to listen to this ELL teaching tip. For more information, contact the ELL teacher in your building, me, Beth Evans, or my colleague, Amanda Gustafson. Thanks so much.